I don't know. I, I don't believe that they would put a gun to someone's head and say, you better terminate this pregnancy or else. But, you know, uh, they put at you in this position where you're weighing the lives of all these people you're supposed to be saving against this one little tiny speck of nuisance that's growing inside of you and make it seem so unimportant. Um, so when you try to look at that bigger picture, the choice seems obvious. I joined the Syria when I was 15 years old, not really knowing what it was, and um, not really understanding the rules or what kind of a dedication I was getting myself into. At one point in uh, 94, I met and married my husband of the time, his name was Christoph, and um, not knowing very much about life, basics such as brushing your teeth or shaving, <laughs> um, I didn't know anything about birth control either. Um, so pretty soon after getting married, ended up pregnant. Um, I was well aware of the rules about pregnancy. They did not allow children in the church especially, specifically in the Sea Org, I guess as in a church you could have children, but not in the Sea Org. Uh, they didn't allow pregnancies or children because they just didn't have the facilities to care for them. And because of the position that I had in the church, I was well aware of what would happen if I decided to keep the child, which is a lot of handlings and a lot of duress and pressure to stay in the Sea Org. That's what they want you to do is stay in the Sea Org. And to stay in the Sea Org, you have to be not pregnant. And that doesn't mean delivering a child. That means terminating a child, uh, terminating a child's life. And um, knowing that and what I would have to go through to be able to keep it made it easier for me to make a decision without much consciousness, consciousness about it, I would say. So the discussions that I had with my husband about it, luckily I was allowed to talk to my husband. Normally they're not allowed to talk to their spouses. Um, we discussed it and decided um, going through with keeping a child was not going to work for either one of us or for the Sea Org, and it was better for us if we just terminated it. It was mechanical decision. It was not a heartfelt decision. It wasn't an emotional decision. It was like, okay, well, we're going to have to. For the next few months after that, I uh, became quite angry as a person, frustrated, depressed, a lot of emotions. Did it have a heartbeat? What did I do? What did I do? What am I doing? Um, and I thought I had um, killed someone. And I, I still think to this day, was it a boy? Was it a girl? It would have been, uh, would have been 16 right now, 94. 16 this year, yeah. I don't think I really decided to do it, you know. It was, I mean, I knew it was gonna happen if I didn't, so it was just easier to just cooperate because I had seen, I was well aware of what they were capable of doing to change someone's mind. I think, you know, although my husband and I never even really talked about it, um, there was like a tension between us after that, you know, unspoken. Um, we stayed together, um, as in we stayed married, but we were separated many times because I kept getting sent away to go do things like my mom had been when I was a child. Got sent to Portland for like four or five months and got sent to Florida for training for a year and a half and then I got sent to the RPF for a couple of years, so there was a lot of times when we weren't together. We were married eight years, probably <clears throat> the longest time we were together was like 94 to 98. That was the time that we were actually together. The rest of it were pretty much separated from 98 until 2000 when I think we got divorced, 2001.
After one of those long separations, uh, I had completed the RPF program and um, was not on any sort of a pill or anything uh, and ended up pregnant again. Uh, went on vacation to see his family in Portugal and found out there, tested myself and found out I was pregnant. Um, we immediately decided to terminate. Um, we found a guy who was willing to do it and went to his back of his house physically and he did the procedure, um, didn't complete it properly. Uh, I flew out the next day or the same day and um, came back to LA and tried to go to a clinic to get on the pill so that it wouldn't happen again and they told me I was still pregnant and um, the, the abortion was not completed properly which is why that happened. Um, after that, I had, I don't know how many miscarriages. I don't know how many miscarriages I've had. Two confirmed by a doctor since then. Um, and I was worried I would never be able to have children. Um, I didn't know if I wanted children. I was scared to have children. I'm still scared to have children. But there's one right here. Six months, it's a girl. I can't say, oh, well, Scientology uh, ruined my body and I can't have children. I'm not gonna say that or anything. It's not necessarily true, but, you know, all of this complicated stuff is a result of my dedication to this church. Or I don't, I don't wanna call it church, it's church. I just, if they wanna be a religion, they need to start acting like one. Church spokesman Tommy Davis said the church has not pressured pregnancy or couples to end their pregnancies as a way to stay in the organization. To the contrary, he said, couples who want children may leave the Sea Org with financial assistance from the church. To support that, Davis submitted to the Times sworn declarations from 11 former Sea Org members who said colleagues and supervisors treated them with compassion as they transitioned out to have children. Pereira's decisions to abort her two pregnancies were personal matters between her and her husband at the time, Davis said. Beyond that, he said, he couldn't comment further.